and welcome back to another installment of Asagao Academy. I'm your host, Sensei Pong. Let's uh, move that to the side. There we go. So, it's finally come down to the wire. See what we're made of here in the tournament. I feel like I'm jinxing myself saying that, because I said that with a Nuzlocke. It's all come down to this. <laughs> Rubber meets the road. <laughs> so, now it's time for me to go up against Ian in Dumba Doom's Revenge. I don't think I'm going to make it. I really don't. What's our tournament points? An exception has occurred. Three, two, one. Check. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, it won't let me. I need to update this. I need to update it bad. They fixed a bunch of little small glitches and stuff with patches. So I'll have to figure that out. Apparently there's um some new updates. One of my newer subscribers have told me. Um Arendus Ariandus. I, I remember who it is. I just don't know how to pronounce your name and I apologize about that. You're the guy with the black mage um avatar. Which nice choice. I, I like Final Fantasy. <laughs> Though when I think Final Fantasy, I think of Final Fantasy one and two and three. Onion Knight for the win. Yes. I almost chose a name that had to do with something with the on Onion Knight. Whatever. <laughs> so let's carry on. Let's see how this goes. I'm I'm wasting time. I'm creating tension where there shouldn't be any tension. I should just hurry up. Then, three, two, one. Start! The game began. I immediately clicked to my full s fill my screen with two more lines of blocks. Ian began working with what he had. I scanned the blocks for the pink hearts, letting, eliminating them one by one, making combos where I could. I still wasn't advanced enough to plan tons of combos ahead of time. Could make it much more likely for combos to happen through probability. The pinks were all gone. Green, uh, green leaves next. Dumbadoom started flipping at the top of the screen. Ian was uh, comboing, which meant I had a few seconds before those blocks would fall. I set up a combo on the top of the screen and started eliminating the orange box below it. Then it happened. <gasps> oh snap! A six combo jumped out at me from my from the screen. My eyes crossed as I s stared at it in shock. I just had to move the top block over one space. Then as quickly as I saw it, it vanished. The blocks looked normal again. You're dead! Oh snap! As Ian's blocks fell upon my humble kingdom, I slid the comboing the combo into place. Two, three, four, combo, five combo, six combo, seven combo, eight combo, mega combo, extreme combo. Ian's attack converted into blocks and hovered above mine. I set up several more combos and waited for them to fall. Ten combo, legendary combo. Dumbadoom started f farting out rainbows over Ian's zone, and then... Blocks. So many blocks. They didn't come in a chunk. They came in a torrential downpour all over Ian's side, sliding from left to right and back again. Ian blinked, his hands and eyes moving frantically over the screen. I wasn't sure if he'd ever seen something like that before. I sure hadn't. I continued the combo while this was happening, but at this point there was no need. Ian's screen filled up. He kept trying to make combos until the very end, but... Game over. Aww, sad. That was it. I won. I stared. Dumbfounded at the screen in front of me, Ian's mouth hung open. The room was silent. Then... Whoa! <laughs> yeah, Hannah! Aw, yeah! I knew you could do it! I glanced up to see the room applauding all of it, even the hidden block club. The announcer was gaping at the screen. I, I, I've never seen a score that high! Certainly, I was red as a tomato. I stood to climb off the platform. <laughs> Yay! Uh, not not so fast. Ian stepped in front of me, grim as always. I braced myself for his infamous sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> but to my surprise, he laughed. Hana. Aw. That was a hell of a game, Hana. That's exactly what I wanted from you. He held a hand in the air, and 
I looked at it in confusion. Don't leave me hanging. Yeah. Oh. I high-fived him and clasped my hand in his. Thanks, Hada. That was fun. Aww. Then he disappeared into the pressing crowd. I scrambled through them as well, eager to find Shane. See? I did it! I won the tournament! I wanted to shout at him and rub it in his face for him not believing in me, much as he tried to, uh, tried to near the end. But I s scouted the room. I realized Shane wasn't there. He never came back. But... why not? Ah, sad. Now I'm nervous. Did I unlock a bad ending? I don't... Eh... Eh... Tension he feels! But... why not? <laughs> oh! Ah, the lag! <laughs> I'm keeping that in, that's kind of funny, that's kind of creepy. Oh! His event is up next! Of course, that's why! I had to go cheer him on. I dashed into the main arcade room, a smile I couldn't wipe off plastered onto my face. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. I always think of the Joker. <laughs> Let's put a smile on that face. By the time I found him, mm, yeah, I like this music. Shane was already sitting down next to Jeff. A large projector screen stood at the front of the room, which was lined with dozens upon dozens of chairs. This was apparently quite a popular event. Seeing the other Normal Boots members gathered together in one of the front rows, I dashed up next to him and grabbed a seat. Hana, Hana, ready for this? I sat up straight and cheered on Shane with the rest of the Normal Boots as he chose his racer. He picked Sal, an anthropomorphic salamander with black skin and orange spots, my personal favorite. He was the lightest and made sharp turns. Jeff's, Jeff picked Frogbert. He was a massive frog. Quite the opposite of Sal. His turns would be wide, but his acceleration speed would let him go fast if he wasn't turning. He was a hard character to play. If you knew how to play him correctly, he would be considered the best. He was fun, and May loved him, but Mai was terrible with any character. At first hand experience of this, uh, I had first hand experience of this. Each person chose their track, and then there was a final track. Rainbow Race, the dazzling multicolored spectacle inspired by the prettiest acid trip ever taken. I love Rainbow Road. That's that's a good track. To my great surprise, rather than the regular MC presiding over the race, instead PBG stood in front of the room and grabbed the microphone. Okay, each racer has chosen their best tracks, and now we're starting! Who do you think will be the winner? <laughs> Probably Shane. <laughs> hey, Jeff has just much chance as Shane does. <laughs> PBG laughed. You're right, you're right. Hmm. May the best man secure the win for their team. A small tadpole floating in a bubble of water washed from side to side of the screen, counting down to the start of the race. Three. Two. One. Pubaga pulled out the checkered cloth and waved in widely as the tadpole squealed, Go! Jeff and Shane both spun out of the starting line. <laughs> what the fuck, Pubaga? <laughs> where, where do you even get that? Pubaga shoved the flag to the floor and grinned sheepishly. <laughs> I always wanted to do that. <laughs> it's fine. Hmm. Just don't do it again. The first race with Jeff's choice felt more like a drag race than anything else. It was one straight line, but there was a lot of obstacles to avoid on the track. Jeff won unsurprisingly. Sal just bounced everywhere. Luckily, Shane pulled into a tie in the next race, where Frogbert's inability to make short, quick turns really pulled a number on him. Finally, it was time for Rainbow Race. I could see, it in the, see the strain in Shane's face, his jaw clenched tight. You can do it, Shane! A slight smile crossed across a uh, smile crossed across his face. Then the race was selected. Pubaga raised his checkered cloth again. No, no. <laughs> Three seconds after the words left their mouth, the race began. Shane started off in the lead in an entire lap until Jeff hit him with a blue slime and sped ahead of him. Now say that's a dirty move. Yeah, all right. 
You snooze, you lose. Oh. Oh. You Shane, you strain? <sighs> <laughs> Don't do this to me, Jeff. Shane was now struggling to catch up to Jeff. I bit my lip. Shane, kick his ass! At first, when the game sh <laughs> showed Jeff's name, the room didn't have enough time to react before Shane let out a huge... Fuck! Oh! <laughs> Sad. Hidden Block applauded immediately. Jeff and Shane shook hands. <sighs> you deserve your win. Papa Gus shook his head at Shane, feigning disappointment, but I could tell he was just joking around. And there we have it. A point for Hidden Block. Papa Gus immediately passed off the microphone to a waiting wallet. Huzzah! <laughs> Whoa! Jet Frogs! The rest of Hidden Block joined in and the tournament continued. Aw, poor Shane. Shane and I ambled around the arcade, playing random games as time went on. He recited an almost encyclopedic knowledge of every game we encountered, so much so that it made my head spin. Did you know? <laughs> Did you know? There are only 40 copies of this cabinet in existence. No, Shane, I did not know. Oh, sad. I feel as if all the knowledge and all the thirst for knowledge will never fill his empty heart in this. That was strangely poetic of me. I apologize. But, that's sad. Finally, it was time for the MC to announce the winner of the tournament. We all crowded around him as he presented a spotlight, a bright grin on his face. Thank you all so much for attending our tournament this year. Did we win? Shane lost his event, but I won mine. Surely there was still a chance? And the winner of this year's tournament is... But -da -da -da. The Normal Boots Club! Yay! Yay! Yes! Yeah! We did it! I screamed and clapped and, s and we swarmed on stage. The poor MC didn't know what hit him. As we celebrated, Jerry grabbed the microphone. Alright! Everyone, I am pleased to announce that we have a new club member in our midst. Hana! Hana Mizuno, where are you? Shane shook, uh, took my hand and gently led me to the front of the stage. The crowd cheered as I tried to find somewhere to hide my face. Welcome to the club, Hannah. Something warm and soft covered my shoulders. I turned to see Shane lifting my very own normal boots jacket over my shoulders, a blush lighting his face. Welcome to the club. Shane. Shane. Oh. Yay. We won, though. When the celebrations finally ended, Shane and I walked back to Asagao hand in hand. I told you I could do it. <laughs> you did. No, I'm very proud of you, lady. Um, uh, are we still on for the picnic tomorrow then? Yeah. Of course. I'll pick you up then. I uh, think. Shane stopped mid-sentence, only blinking at me. Bye. Okay, have a good day. Oh, uh, uh, what's going on? He turned on his heel and stalked away. Again, I hoped he wouldn't make a habit of it. Shaking my hand and drawing my jacket closer around me, I headed into Primrose House. Bum bum bum. I almost couldn't sleep. I was so excited and nervous. My poked fun at me. Who gets excited over something over something as chill as a picnic? But then gave me a soft pink blanket just before we turned in. Aw. It's my favorite. It'll bring you lots of good luck. With that in hand, I rose early and got ready for the picnic. Mai was still sleeping. The tournament took place the same day as one of her biggest games. I doubted she would bother getting out of bed before noon. Boom, 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 boom. Polizia! Shade knocked. Right on time, as always. Just before I went to the door, I passed my normal boots jacket. With a grin, I slipped it over my shoulders. The newest member of the normal boots club. Hey. I see you up on time. Yeah. Of course I am. Ready to go? Yup, I remember to pick up our sandwiches. My heart stopped as I turned into the basket in my hands. I forgot. Calm down, Hannah. I got him. He packed the sandwiches on top of the basket, then took it from me with the easy grin. Let's get going. Aw, the day wasn't as warm as I would have liked, 
but at least it was sunny out. The weather report was right, for once. As Shane and I made our way to the picnic field, we traded jokes and comebacks. I prepared for today. I was definitely going to impress him. Okay, okay. So, have you heard this one? Did you know, in the, in the 1999 game, The Tour of Worlds, hackers have been able to dismantle the code of the game to exact symbols? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That was actually Tour of Worlds, too. No. Jeez, fine. <laughs> but, did you know recently, uh, they recently cryptographed the symbols and found out they formed the secret phrase? Really? Really? <laughs> it said, I bet you can't decode this. Huh. Shay made a noise akin to something coming out of a horse. Dicks. <laughs> What's even the point? I know, I wanted to be something more meaningful. <laughs> it's by Santum Studios, right? Terrible. <laughs> no, good fact, I didn't know that. I beamed, happiness blooming within me. Mm. Hey, hey, now don't let it get to your head now. Hey! <laughs> Does this spot look good? Anyway, it's fine. It's up to you. Let's sit up over there then. I set the basket down in the grass, and Shane hung the pink blanket over his arm, reminiscent of a butler. Can you lay the blanket down while I get the plate set up? It was colder than I imagined it would be, but I spent, the long, I spent so long preparing that there was no way anything big would go wrong. I should be more confident in myself. That's what I thought, right as I pulled six spoons out of my basket. There were only supposed to be two. Uh... Um, something wrong. Shane flapped the blanket open. We watched it float to the ground like a butterfly. <gasps> yeah, actually. There are six spoons in here. Shane shrugged. <laughs> so? No, don't you understand? There are six spoons. That means... My hand searched the rest of the basket, almost frantically. <sighs> that means there are no forks. <laughs> That's it? We can make do with it. We don't need any folks. We don't have we don't have many folk with the items anyway. He sat down and started helping me unload the basket. I put a hand out to stop no. him. I need to check if anything else is wrong. My voice wavered, but only slightly. Shane sli uh, sighed and reached behind him. Out of his backpack, he pulled a fork. <laughs> I brought this just in case. I always have a fork on me. In case what? <laughs> in case. You can use it. <laughs> I... Alright, thanks. I accepted the fork, but still... It wasn't that I needed a fork. It was that I forgot it in the first place. I tried my best to push it out of my mind, taking our sandwiches from the basket. I might have messed up, but at least I knew that these were good. Shane helped me make them, after all. Turkey and avocado for me, ham and cheese for Shane. As I relished my first bite, I tried not to worry. Shane was right. It wasn't a big deal. The cool breeze invigorated me, and I decided that I was going to have a good time no matter what. Hey. How's a sandwich? Good. I smiled, covering mouth in case there was something in my teeth. As I did, a small wind kicked up. It was a chilly wind, and I shivered. Then a drop of water hit my glasses. Oh. <laughs> Is it... raining? Shane paused mid-chew, putting his palm into the air. I don't feel anything. Like him, I gazed up again. There were some clouds, but, there were, but they were mostly the fluffy white ones. <laughs> uh, right, I need to calm down. But it was hard to say, stay optimistic at this point. Shane must have noticed the look on my face, because he slipped his hand into mine. <laughs> I smiled at the ground, willing my palms to stay dry. Uh... Sorry if my hand is sweaty. We were worried about the same thing. A devilish idea came to mind, and I did my best to hide, to hide my grin. It feels like you just washed your hands and barely dried them. <gasps> Shit! <laughs> he released his already loose uh, hold and tried to wiggle out of my grasp, but I held on. Hmm. Nope. Don't worry about it, really. A cold drop hit the top of my head, and I looked up. Dark clouds were moving in fast around us, like God drawing a blanket over the sky. Another drop splattered against my cheek. No! 
Looks like it's gonna rain. No! No, the weather report said it's sunny all day. Well... Well, sometimes they can be wrong, Anna. I let go of his hand and held my palm towards the sky. Daring another drop to fall, Shane's eyes were on the sky as well. Weather reports aren't always accurate. Dark clouds pillowed above us, but I still refused to believe it. Shane put his hand out before, uh, again for me to hold. Let's just go back to the dorm. We can have a picnic another day. It's not a big hmm. deal. That's not the problem. I know we can have another picnic an any day. I know we can make more fish sticks and crumpets and... What? Crumpets? You still on that? <sighs> I just want one thing to go right, Shane. Just one thing. Everything I've tried to do for you, with you, ends up a total mess or almost killing you. Maybe some of it was bad luck, but after a while, the only conclusion was that I was the problem. A gust of wind blew through. Several droplets landed on me, dotting the lenses of my glasses. Shame seemed at a loss. I didn't blame him. Not only was the picnic being ruined by rain, but now I was ruining it with my stupid emotional outburst. And now... I'm making it even worse. My voice cracked. Anna. The dam broke. My tears fell freely. As did the rain. Right on cue. Shane put his hand around my shoulders. But even though bleary eyes, I could see his jacket getting wetter and wetter. I shrugged off his touch. From the first moment you met me, you absolutely hated me. When I wanted to join the club, you warned everyone against me. When I was asked to be in the tournament, you told me I couldn't do it. I made those crumpets, those damn crumpets. The last thing I, I wanted was to cause you pain. <laughs> <laughs> that lot good. That did. I blinked. What? I... I'm sorry? I'm just saying. That didn't much good. That didn't do much good, didn't, did it? You've been... You've kind of been wrecking things around me from day one. Oh, crap. What he said was true. Uh, what he said was true, but did he really have to say it? It stung. I'm just agreeing with you that you were saying in the beginning, you're right. You've been nothing but trouble from the start. Uh, that, that, that wasn't... I just want to make you happy. I, I know, Hannah, and you did. Kind of. It's not your fault that things went that way, they did. I like you a lot, Hannah, but... But... But what? But what kind... But could there be after I like you a lot? Shouldn't we just stop there? Well... I know you aren't gonna like this, but I think girls with pink hair are dangerous. I told you that Emma was the same way, right? Everything gravitated around her. Government agencies, evil villains... I have suspicions that she was secretly a magical girl, and... That was why I was getting kind of kidnapped all the time. But when I got to know you, I thought things could be different. That maybe your reality wrapping powers were better than hers. Because you were a kinder person. After all, your powers have only gotten you a life of misery. Your mother, your father, your old school. It wasn't until you came here that you s started getting lucky. But then the events turned on me. They wanted you to cause suffering. But now they're working through me. So you accidentally insult me. You injure me. You almost kill me. Now, even on the best of days, it rains. <sighs> even at the best, it'll ever be. I'll still get rained on. What? What are you saying? I don't understand. I don't even think what you're saying is true. You sound like you're crazy. It's just... Uh... I think I'll keep seeing you. I think if I keep seeing you, I'll be in danger. I don't feel safe around you. I'm... I'm sorry. Shane stood up. I watched him from where I sat, completely stunned. I can't do this. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but... Shane walked away, out across the field and toward campus. He didn't even glance back at me. I didn't understand it. Things were going so well, but in the end, my pink hair was the problem. He left because he had a crazy delusions that I was somehow magical, and the fates of the world would conspire to kill him. I didn't understand it. Mike kept saying, he's a nutter. 
You're better off without him. But as much as he said it, doubt still pounded through my mind. What had I done to earn my friendship with the Normal Boots Club, to even earn the scholarship to Asagao Academy? By all means, someone who left school for a full year shouldn't have gotten the scholarship to one of the most prestigious schools in the country. Over time, my doubts happened and deepened. I started feeling like anything bad that happened to anyone was my fault, even though I couldn't prove it. Anything good that happened was something I didn't earn. It wasn't long before I chose to leave the academy and go back home. May didn't want me to leave. Even Shane seemed sad that I was going. But I had some things I needed to figure out. That was that. Bad end. Aww. So hey, I'm adding this voiceover as an end tag, so if it Aww. seems out of place, that's why. I'm sorry for the sad ending, as I was kind of at a loss of words Aww. in the raw Let's Play. I don't cry very often, but seeing how my past personal life has made me a near-hardened, soulless individual, sh yeah. but, you know, Shane breaking up with me has o almost brought a tear to my eye. Good work, Danny. Good work, Kara. You almost brought the emotion out of me. Not a lot of media does that for me. Even though I got a sad, bad ending, I enjoyed every step of it. Anywho, thanks for watching my blind Let's Play of Asagao Academy. As always, there's links down below in the description. And if anybody is curious, I will be planning to upload another route in no time flat. I'll also upload the worst, good, and best endings to Shane as well. I looked up a walkthrough, and apparently, Shane's route isn't the oh, easiest sad. to dice, uh, decipher your way through. But that's what I get for playing blind, I suppose. I really wanted to crack Shane on my first run. Did you know gaming and did you know movies are some of my favorite YouTube series? But with these new uploads, I won't be starting from square one. I'll probably start from choosing my uh, date for the Flower Festival, as that seems to be the major branching point in the story outline. I'll just give a brief explanation on how I uh, reached that point in the decisions and links to the parts of this Let's Play that goes up until that point. That way I don't have to basically upload the same material Damn. eight times for each route which includes the secret routes, so stay tuned for that. I may do a hidden blocker Jacques route very soon. Mm, spoilers. I'll probably play blind with those as well, so expect some sad endings unless I follow the best endings via walkthroughs I find. But playing with the Shane route has got me to kind of understand the mechanics of how to go about these other routes with a bit more tact. I'll also try to reach the true ending once it's all said and done. Either way, did you know? It was absolutely heartbreaking to figure out the worst ending for Shane. A lot of bringing up Emily. A lot of trying to stuff more crumpets and scalding hot tea down Shane's choking throat. So stay tuned for more triumphs and tragedies here on Sensei Pong's Pong Plays. Like and subscribe.